we have seen how important signaling was when the first organisms were evolving let me tell you something else 70 to 80 percent of the drugs the pharmaceutical agents medicines that we take in one form and another influence the signaling systems so let's look at how the signaling systems are designed because the, they have most of the signaling systems have common themes they are made they have a similar structure and similar components so let's look at their design before we do that let's first of all see what is it that signaling systems can do first of all signaling systems tell cells to survive without uh, the signaling system cells will not be able to survive in our body we know that there are cells in different organs of our body and cells keep on falling off from these different organs we also shed skin many of our skin cells fall every day so imagine if one of these cells which inside our body say for example a liver cell fell off the liver and entered the bloodstream and it went and settled somewhere in the heart or the brain perhaps and it started growing and started forming a little liver in a different organ it will be very catastrophic it so happens that extracellular matrix in these organs and our organs is continuously signaling our cells to survive without that these cells will not be able to survive so signals tell our cells to live signals also tell our cells to divide we have talked about cell division and we saw how certain proteins are produced when cells receive a signal for example cyclin proteins when cells receive a signal to divide these proteins are made and they with the help of cdks put the cells into the division cycle so these are the signaling molecules can also tell cells to divide differentiate i mentioned earlier too we all start with a single cell and that single cell divides and divides and transforms or some of those cells differentiate into one type of tissue others differentiate into a different type of tissue also very importantly signals can tell cells to die this is just as important as telling cells to live that for example some some of our cells when they start malfunctioning they become for example cancerous they or cells we do not need immune cells for example that can attack our own body those cells have to be given information that they are no longer needed so they have to commit suicide so cells can also receive signals to go through suicide or apoptosis so these are some of the things signals tell cells the overall design of the signaling system is such that that there is a receptor present in the extracellular part of the cell here is this plasma membrane so part of this receptor is outside the cell this part and part of this receptor is inside the cell and there's there's a little domain of this this receptor right here which is embedded in the plasma membrane so this is a special specialized protein molecule that can receive a signal just like we have antennas or dishes outside sitting outside on the roof of our houses this is sim similar in function to that so this is sitting outside the cell sensing the environment looking for signaling molecules from here on we are going to call signaling molecules ligands ligand basically means a molecule that will bind this receptor which is present which has a domain sitting outside the cell so the sensor or the dish or the antenna is called the receptor and the signal is called the ligand when the signal binds the receptor or ligand binds the receptor it induces a conformational change that is position of atoms in the three dimensional space of that molecule that information which was present outside the cell in the form of conformational change is now conveyed to the cell interior or in the cytoplasm so say for example the ligand bound here it caused a conformational change which will change the structure of this whole molecule and even the 
cytoplasmic domain of this molecule will have a change. When there is a change in the cytoplasmic domain of the receptor, there are proteins or cellular machinery which can sense the cytoplasmic domain of this receptor has changed, implying that this particular receptor has received a signal. When these proteins interact with the cytoplasmic domain, for example, in this case, the square green protein, when it interacts with the, the cytoplasmic domain of this receptor, it goes through a change. Now, this changed green box will convey that information to the next protein in line or next molecule in line will ultimately change a function of a protein. For example, an enzyme will be activated. For example, a skeletal protein can receive an information, for example, to polymerize microtubules, to polymerize or depolymerize microtubules. Or in many cases, it will activate a protein, a regulatory protein, gene regulatory protein, like a transcription factor we talked about earlier. This will go and bind a specific region in DNA and result in transcription of a specific messenger RNA. Ultimately, the end result being the cellular function will be modified. It, the cell which was not able to do something before, now it is able to do that particular thing. So we have already talked about this. There are some genes which are expressed in all cells, which we refer to as the housekeeping genes, which include the enzymes, for example, required for the metabolism for keeping the cell alive, for fulfilling its energy requirements, enzymes that participate in respiration, for example. Some genes are expressed when cells enter a particular pathway of differentiation. So it's transient expression of a particular gene. There are some genes that a specialized cell or differentiated cell in a particular pathway will express and not any other cell. I gave you an example of tau, a protein which is expressed in neurons and not other cells. Some genes are express, expressed when, for a short period of time, when there is an environmental change, cells receive a signal, they need to produce a, a, produce a particular enzyme, like we saw in the lac opron when we were studying it. Cells temporarily started producing proteins that could metabolize lactose. So that sort of signal. So what can happen when you turn off one gene or the other? Here is a graphic example of this phenomena on the screen. You can see on, these are the insect ovarian cells, spherical shape. The cells on the other side, these are also insect ovarian cells. The only difference is that these cells are expressing one protein, a special protein called tau. This protein is used to bundle the microtubules, allowing these cells to form these long filaments, axon-like filaments. So this is a graphic example, just having one protein, what one protein could do to the shape of the cell. Now, not all proteins, when they're activated or transcribed, can change the shape of a cell, but they can change the cell biochemical properties or physiological properties of the cells can also be changed drastically just by expression or production of one protein. So here's the signaling again, uh, a brief overview of it. So the entire process from signal detection to the response is, is called signal transduction pathway or signaling cascade. Again, the design is very simple. An antenna on top, your receptor molecule, a ligand or a signaling molecule binds our receptor and the change is conveyed to the cellular machinery that allows cell to modify its function.